So I found a, a package on the Amazon. Open it up here today. Sent me. I'm hooked on these on the ship in the states. Everybody was using them. I'm going to the soft shackles. Found these on sale. They're produced by Ranger, which I got a lot of my recovery stuff from. Seems to be pretty good so far. So yeah. So as everybody got lots of videos on these on the internet at the moment about the pros and cons. Uh, I liked all the pros, so uh, that's why I went with these. Uh, they're soft, light. Easy to use, they float in the mud or the water and you don't drop them and disappear. And of course if they break you don't have a ton of metal flying all over the place for your bystanders and uh, vehicles to get smashed with. So uh, yeah I'm going to put these in my recovery kit um, and uh, have some of these. Of course I'll keep my steel shackles for special occasions that I need a third or fourth piece but yeah these seem to be good because they can wrap around pretty well in your recovery point let's take them out of the bag and have a closer look so I got these in the mail today these soft shackles they're from Ranger Equipment, which I have a lot of my recovery equipment from. So far, it's been okay. Oh, I just wanted to show you how easy these straps were to use. With just a slide knot. Off the top. You can lay them out. Just a slide not to put them back on. So this is the new shackle that's been uh, being used by a lot of guys. And I found in the States that they seem to be the answer. Um, so yeah, it's a soft shackle. They uh, come in different colors and sizes and strengths. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give these a try and see how they work for me. Uh, but yeah, the pros and cons, there's lots of videos, testing and stuff on the YouTube that you can check into. But the biggest thing is the safety factor. It's light and it, uh, if anything does happen and the cable breaks or strap breaks and something goes flying, not a big chunk of metal that's gonna get flying everywhere and uh, hurt somebody or break something. So, yeah. I'm gonna give these a try, but the recommendations have been good for them. And uh, we'll go from there, but yeah, check them out. Different suppliers out there. And you can, uh, by uh, all kinds of different colors, sizes, and uh, capacities, and um, good luck with them. And I'm hoping I'll have some good luck and be able to use them only if I have to. Not looking for trouble, but uh, when you're off roading, there's always something that comes up. So, yeah, check these out online. Check out your supplier. These come off Amazon. And they were the Rangers. These were on sale for 33 bucks each. They're regular, about 70, and you can buy them. Depends on whose brand name you're buying, up to 300 bucks a piece. So 
Anyway, give them a check out. They're light, nothing rattles, no bolts to lose, and um, should do the trick. Uh, after receiving my uh, soft shackles in the mail the other day, and that little opening that I did, I thought I'd go over my safety uh, recovery equipment that I have. So we're gonna go back here and look in the back of my Jeep. And uh, yeah, I'll we'll get everything tucked in the lower toolbox compartment. And everything kind of tidies away in there really well. So uh, yeah, let's go through this and show you my extras that I have, but these are the essentials for anyone that's doing some off-roading and uh, needs to do some self-recovery or rescuing when you're out there in the trail. Oh, well, there's one thing I want to point out that Jeeps are bad for is this drip. Just wants to drip right in there. Which is kind of a pain. So when you're working in the back here, you get this little drip that wants to run right into your toolbox area. But uh, of course it's a one of them things when you get a soft top. Happen, but let's go through the recovery kit. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been uh, building up some of them. I got some, as mentioned earlier, going through, I got some recovery gloves. In here, two different pairs. I've been buying some Ranger recovery equipment. I got the shackle from Ranger. I got a couple of ratchet straps. You never know what you might have to hold together. steel shackle or clevis a little heavier one for the bigger trucks that you may have to hook on to a couple extra pins for your receiver we got a ranger snatch block I like this because it's nice and clean Greasable cert there. And it's pretty light, but yet uh, heavy duty. And there's the part number for that if you're interested. Got a little uh, hatchet. to chop a little twig out of a axle or in the frame somewhere also great for making a campfire if you need to of course the recovery shovel breaks down edges I 
look at the Ranger uh, tree protector strap. Also, there's the part number. Next year, steel shackles. Another pin. 50 foot toe strap. Then an all purpose kit that has a saw. Some knives in here and uh, odds and ends just to if you have to cook your supper on the side of the road somewhere or if you have to cut your way out of a bush or a snag. So that's what I got in the back here. So we'll go to the what I carry for extras for when I'm doing the longer trips. But yeah, that's your essentials. And then we'll go over the other items that I carry. Well, of course it's Canada, so you always got a snow brush in your possession. 99% of the time of the year. I got the little fire water bags, collapsible. Great for around the campfire. Two of them I carry. First aid kit. One flashlight. Oh, I got the flashlight and then the two LED spotlights also in there. It's great for after dark recoveries and also great for shooting my movies if I'm out in the dark or need more lighting. These little lights, they stand up. I'm going to point them anywhere. But just four batteries in there, so... Pretty straightforward. An air compressor. An umbrella just in case. <laughs> Chunk of rope in case you need to build a little shelter to work on something. Some rags to clean up or soak up the mess that you might spill. A little bit of axle oil. In case, like on the Rubicon, you have a problem, somebody breaks a something or a seal blows, and you got to get that last little bit, and always a jug of engine oil. Uh, and you got your jumper cables in here, and then in here, just some odds and ends of pliers and uh, some goodies, and then of course. Always pack a toolkit when you're going for them extreme rides, but yeah, these are the soft shackles I picked up the other day, so I'll show you how them go on the winch. I'm running a worn 8,000 pound winch, I got the Smitty built winch end. This puppy's rated for 20,000 pounds. So, anyway, I'm just going to show you how easy these soft, soft chocolates are. And yeah, then I'll put everything away. Oh, here's our Ranger soft shackles we cut the other day. So, yeah, this end kind of forces you to use uh, shackles and straps instead of just running your hook around a tree and then cinching up to your cable which is bad for your cable and hook so yeah this just pushes through this 
nice and easy put your strap in slip that over there and you're ready to go onto your buddy's bumper hook or another anchor point or just a strap around the tree so that's how easy them are so make sure you check your eyelet for the dimension of the soft shackle you want to order and um, yeah enjoy your 4 by 4 ing stay safe and hopefully you never have to use this stuff but if you're into it you will be using it sometime along the way